class where we just get to move our bodies. We're just going to have a thorough flow, um, try to get out of our busy mind and drop into the breath and allow ourselves to be present. And we'll begin that process by sitting nice and tall. So if you'd like to sit on some support, use any prop that helps you to really lengthen through your spine and drop down into your sit bones with more ease. And you can rest your hands in your lap, palms facing up or over your knees, either one. And you might join your thumb and index fingers to a touch, creating Gyan Mudra which allows us to, again, quiet the mind and tap into our intuitive body, that third eye point, Anjani Chakra, that space that connects us to our highest voice, the voice within us that reminds us to take this time out for ourselves, to give ourselves some nurturing and rejuvenating attention. And to further help us drop into that space, let's drink in a really big inhale together all the way up into your collarbones. Then open your mouth and sigh and let the top corners of your shoulders move back and down away from your ears, further lengthen through your neck and crown. And again, biggest inhale in through your nose, fill the side ribs, side lungs. You could choose again a sign exhale, clearing away any busyness in your mind as you drop into this time and space that you are giving you. And one more time, biggest inhale in. And as we sigh, this time let's bring our hands into Anjali Mudra, bowing the head to look within. And as our hands come together in this way, we begin to connect to the center of our being, the center of our heart, that is always in the vibration of peace, beyond all the surface energy of anxiety and stress, of frustration, of worry. Under all of that, there is always this jewel within you that holds peace. Tap into that innermost space within you and allow it to fill you. And then as you do, either in your mind or if you choose, you could even say it out loud with your inhalations, the words, I am. And on your exhale, present and peaceful. Inhaling, I am. Exhaling, present and peaceful. And doing that one more time on your own, either within or out loud. May we carry this mantra with us as we practice this morning. And to further honor this space that brought us together in this way, in a moment, we're going to inhale the arms over the head, and then we're going to exhale the hands and Anjali Mudra back down the front of us while we own. We'll do it three times. Inhale. Oh. Oh. Inhale your arms up again. And on your exhale, take a side stretch, taking your right hand to the floor and your left arm up and over your ear. You might move your head forward and back a few times just to loosen some tension or kinks you might be feeling in your neck. And as we hold, go ahead and bend your elbow and then turn your palm up to the sky. 
and then re-extend. Get a little bit longer stretch here, biggest inhale. Let's exhale, rise, and just simply switch sides. Just glide over to the other direction. And again, feel into your neck. You might move your head forward and back a few times. And again, as you continue to be here, bend your elbow, flip your palm to the sky and stretch, stretch, stretch. Breathe into your side ribs and lungs, create space. Biggest inhale. Exhale, rise and flow into a twist over your right shoulder. You can use your left hand to press against your knee. Sit taller in your inhale, lift your sternum up from your lower back and turn your chin to your collarbone. Look to the corners of your eyes. Return to center, float your arms up again, and exhale, twisting over that left shoulder. Again, know that your gaze will guide your body into a deeper expression of your twist, massaging the morning kinks out of your body. And inhale back to center, floating arms up. Open mouth, exhale, arms out and down to your sides. We're gonna move into Balasana, child's pose. Of course, honor your body throughout practice. Use any supports you might want to have. Bring your big toes together. Open your knees wide apart. And just bring your forehead to the floor. Crawl your fingertips forward. You might actually lift onto them and really crawl them forward. And then further nestle your hips to your heels and surrender to your third eye point again. Finding that we're waking up our intuitive body, our intuitive self that reminds us that we're exactly where we need to be in this moment now. Peaceful and present. Let's rise to an all fours position. Shoulders stacking over wrists, knees under hips, warming up the spine, cat cow. Inhale, look up. Exhale, coil in. Inhale, look up. Pull your shoulder blades down your back. Open to the throat. Exhale, opposite expression. Really tuck the tail, tuck in the chin. Massage your back. And again, big inhale, breath, look all the way up. Exhale, breath, coil in. And inhale, sway the back and be here in this shape, holding as you walk your hands a step forward. Tuck under the toes, lift the knees, Adamukha Svanasana, walking your feet apart. Hip distance at least. You can climb up onto the ball mounds of your feet and just start to dance out your down dog. Personalize that dance. Not worrying about form or perfection. Just move through your joints, your toes, your hips, your shoulders, whatever you would like to do. Again, just saying good morning to your entire body. And eventually, we'll surrender into a place of stillness in our down dog and take a few breaths. From here, let's come forward into plank asana, gathering in through your core strength as you strike your thigh bones up. Hold here another full cycle of breath. And then raise your sit bones up again, Adho Mukha Svanasana, and a little more briskly. Inhale, plank. Exhale, dog. Wide open palms. Again, inhale, plank. Exhale, dog. From here, we're going to go ahead and come forwards into plank. 
And then for Ashtanga Asana, knees, chest, and chin to the floor. Pause here, elbows near your sides. Then lower your hips. Bhujangasana, ground your feet. We'll roll the shoulders back, left, and be here for a few moments. You can move your neck a little bit side to side. Pull your shoulders further down your back. Let your breath guide you into a further openness across the heart. And surrender back down. Tuck under your toes. Strike your thigh bones up. Inhale, plank. Exhale to dog. And keeping your feet open, hip distance apart and parallel. Let's walk our hands back to greet the feet and just hang upside down for a few breaths. Grab your elbows, make a box. Lifting the elbow box over your ears. You might sway your torso like a peaceful, gentle elephant trunk. Side to side. And swaying back to center, hinge a little bit more over your body. Then bend the knees, we'll let the arms hang to the earth, and with the chin tucked in, we'll slowly roll up, one vertebra at a time, bringing arms overhead, Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, hands to heart center, Tadasana, bowing the head with gratitude. Following the breath, let, we'll inhale the arms overhead. Exhale, swan dive into yourself. Feel the beautiful long length of front and back body as you fold, head dropping in last. Inhale, halfway up. Exhale, fold again. We're gonna inhale, arms out wide and come all the way up to stand, reaching arms overhead. Exhale, hands back to heart, bow, look within. And again, inhale, follow the breath, reach above. And exhale, dive into yourself, lengthening out the entire back body as you take this bow. Inhale, halfway up, lengthen. Exhale, fold in. From here, we're gonna inhale, look up, and exhale, walk forward into a plank asana. Pause here, shoulders over the wrists. Lower your hips level to shoulders and look forward. Then a variation of Vashti Sasana. Keep your right hand grounded and rock your feet to the right, but have your left foot in front. Stagger your feet as you raise this left arm. Inhale. On your exhale, sweep the arm under your body. Thread through. Inhale, sweep up. Exhale, thread through, cueing in your core muscles. Inhale, sweep up. Exhale, thread through. One more time, we're gonna inhale, reach up, and then exhale, stretch that arm over your ear. Return to plank, and then exhale slowly, belly, chest, and forehead to the floor. Take your arms back by your sides, palms facing down. Take in a full breath, inhale. Exhale, lift your head, your arms, your legs, soaring off your mat. Reach through your fingers. Maybe lift a little bit higher on your next breath. Surrender down and plant your hands mid-torso. Tuck under your toes, strike your thigh bones up. Inhale, plank. Exhale, dog. Just taking a slow inhale in through the nose. Out the nose. Then tucking the tail, inhale forwards into plank. Grounding our left hand, rock your feet to the left. You can stagger your right foot in front. Vashti Sasana, inhale, reach up. And exhale, sweep under. Inhale, sweep up, and exhale, reach under. Again, biggest inhale, expand, and exhale, reach under. One more time, we'll lift up, and then explore bringing the arm over your head. Further breathe into your side. 
And then make your way back into plank and exhale really slow, bending your elbows, belly, chest, and forehead. Ground your feet and this time interlace your fingers at your lower back. You could always hold a belt between your hands. Salambhasana. As you're ready, exhale to lift off the earth. Again, you can move your head side to side. Pull your fist further back as your shoulder blades glide down your back. One more breath. Soft landing to earth. Hands mid torso, tuck under your toes. Strike your thigh bones up. Inhale, plank. Exhale, dog. Again, just be here. A few breaths. Slow, deep inhales. Equally slow exhales. Then looking towards your hands, choose to either walk or float up to greet your hands. Feet together, look up to lengthen. Exhale to fold, Uttanasana. Then bending your knees, let's make our way into chair, Uttanasana, and hold here for three. Letting your sit bones lower towards the earth. Two, one more breath. Inhale to rise, and on your exhale, reach back. Press your thigh bones back, hips forward. Nestle your head back and just open across the front body. Biggest inhale. Exhale, swan dive slowly over yourself again, following one line of energy with your eyes to yourself. Inhale, lengthen. On your exhale, step or float back, making your way through your vinyasa and honor what you want that to look like in your body. You could always go to cobra instead of up dog. We'll meet in our downward dog and walk the feet together. Let's inhale the right leg up to the skies. Just point to your toes. Imagine touching the clouds above. And then hug the thigh in and step through for a high lunge, crescent lunge. We'll just be here for a breath. Full inhale, Let's exhale, hands to the floor and step back to a three-legged dog. Lift your right leg and open. You can circle out your ankle, shake out your head. And then from here, we're gonna scissor the knee under and across to our left elbow, and then lift and open in dog. Scissor under and across. Lift and open in dog. This time scissor under and across and then slide your foot across the floor. Ground your back heel. Lift your hips and sweep the left arm overhead. Look into the direction of your reach. Then make your way back into plank chaturanga. Follow your breath through the vinyasa that feels good in your body. Meeting back. Adamukha. Swanasana, walking feet together, exhale. Inhale, left leg up, you could point your toes, touch the sky, exhale, hug in, step through, crescent, high lunge, feel really strong in your back leg as you sweep your arms above, be here for a big inhale. Exhale, hands to earth and step back. Three-legged dog, lift and open to your left. Again, just circle out your ankle, maybe shake out your head. And then we're gonna scissor the leg under and across to your right elbow and open again. Three-legged dog, scissor under and across, lift and open. Scissor across and just slide your foot across the floor. Ground your back heel. Press your hips up and unfold wide from center, reaching through and beyond the fingertips. Return to plank. And if you would like to skip a vinyasa at any time, please honor that in your body. We can always meet you in downward facing dog. 
Let's be here for a few breaths. You close your eyes. Drinking in, I am. Exhale, peaceful and present. Rising up onto your toes, choose to walk or float up to greet your hands and fold Uttanasana. Bend your knees, we'll make our way into chair Uttanasana. Bringing hands to heart in prayer pose, we're in a twist, left shoulder outside of the right knee. Look at your knees, make sure they're lined up nice and parallel. Press through palms, lift through sternum. Maybe look up and over your right shoulder. Perhaps separate your arms out wide. Take another deep breath in. And exhale, fold, Uttanasana. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, step or float back. Chaturanga, Dandasana. Inhale, Urdhva Mukha. Exhale, Adamukha. Let's walk our feet together. Inhale your right leg up. Again, just point your toes, lift. Exhale, hug in and step through, high lunge. Crescent pose. Be here another breath. Bring your hands to your heart and we're in a twist. Here in this lunge, left shoulder again, outside of the right knee, just like you did in your chair. Push down through palms, lift through belly. If you like to add variations like sweeping the arms out, you're welcome to do so. Maybe right arm over ear. If your shoulders are feeling open for half bind or full bind, of course you're welcome to take that. But staying in prayer might actually give you the best feeling of a twist or the best stability. Honor you. Let's all look down at our right big toe, lower your left knee, and come into a low lunge, Anjani Asana, where we exhale the arms behind us and interlace your fingers. Pull your fist towards your knee and lift your heart space, nestling your head back. Shift your torso forward for half splits. Of course, adding in maybe some blocks under your hands if that's helpful in getting into those tight areas of your hamstring and calf muscle. Just sigh into the exhale and send peaceful energy to your hamstrings. Feel that you're exhaling away any fight or flight energy you might be holding. Let it go. And from here, we're gonna walk our hands back under the shoulders, reach around your right foot and meet in a three-legged dog that might turn into flipping your dog over into a wild thing. Of course, staying a three-legged dog, if that's more appropriate in your body, another breath. Let's make our way back into a three-legged dog and moving through a vinyasa, you could try one-legged vinyasa, keeping your right leg lifted as you go into up dog and keep your back toes tucked under. Maybe double dip, a little extra chaturanga. If you are in your down dog with your right foot down, go ahead and lift it back up. We're gonna hug the thigh in, step forward and make our way into a vertical split. So just kind of spring off your back leg as you're ready. Fold into your right leg. One or both hands eventually clasping your ankle as you trust your solid foundation here in that standing leg. Big toe rooted, very present here. Fingertips to earth, inhale, look up. Exhale, left foot greets right. Fold in, maybe with a little shimmy of your hips. Shimmy of your knees and your head. Sigh, fold in. Tadasana. 
Let's bend our knees, finding chair, Utkatasana. Hands to heart for Parvrita Utkatasana. Right shoulder outside the left knee. Press down through your palms. Lift through your belly. Maybe gaze all the way over your left shoulder and feel free to sweep your arms wide. Let's exhale and fold. Uttanasana. Now from here, we'll add in an optional Bakasana crow pose. If you know the pose, go for it. Go ahead and start to get there. If you know that your body would really prefer squat asana or garland, feel free to be here instead. If you wanna move into crow at any moment, you could work with that, perhaps even with support. Maybe your third eye is gonna rest on a block. Sometimes three points of contact make all the difference in the world here. You have to get in close enough to the block. Just look at the block the whole time because you want to lift your feet. Your body will follow your eyes. So look up regardless if your head is on a block or not. Just keep looking up. And you might just start with one foot coming up and then the other. Eventually you're there and you could even lift your head off the block and look forward. So just play around a little bit. And if you're holding a squat position the whole time, that's great. But since you're at home, no one's watching, maybe just allow yourself to try it. See what happens, you never know. Today might be the day. Eventually we will meet in down dog. You could step back, you could float back, clear the slate. Returning to Adha Mukha Swanasana. Step your feet together. Let's lift the left leg and point your toes. Reach up. Exhale, hug in and step through. High lunge. Feel really strong in that back leg. Exhale, hands to heart. We'll twist here. Right shoulder. Outside the left knee. Press through the palms and lift through your back leg and lift through your belly. And as before, those of you who really enjoy arm variations, sweeping your arms out wide. Maybe for your body, your shoulders are willing to go into a half or full bind. But just stay in a place where you know you are really working with that sensation of revolving, of twisting. Where you feel stable, calm, and present. And we will all look down at our left big toe, lower the knee, reach your arms above. Exhale your hands behind you and interlace the opposite interlock, the other thumb and fingers on top. Pull your fist down. Lift your heart like there's a helping hand between your shoulder blades. Nestle your head back by relaxing your tongue to low palate. Bring your torso forward, Ardha Hanuman. Half splits, we'll shift the hips back. Glide your left heel forward. Maybe add support under your hands. We'll fold in. Sign into your exhales. Couple more breaths. Let's walk our hands under the shoulders and reground the sole of the left foot. Move into a three-legged dog that might turn right into flipping the dog over. Tap your toes, pivot around on the ball of your back foot, and just press your hips up high and joyfully unfold, expansive heart here. Take up space. We'll return to our three-legged dog. Keeping the left leg lifted, perhaps, as you move through a vinyasa. Of course, at any moment, 
you can place that foot back down. But we will return to a three-legged dog. Left leg to sky. Hug left thigh in. Step through, and we're going to move into a vertical split. So go right into just springing off your back toes as you're ready. And take that bow into yourself. See your big toe really sticky glued into the floor, rooted into the floor, into the earth. Creating a peaceful and present energy here. One more breath. Fingertips to earth. Inhale, look up. Exhale, right foot greets left. And exhale again into Uttanasana. Let's be here another breath. Sweep your arms out wide. Reach overhead. Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale. Tadasana. Let's just take a few breaths, standing tall, closing eyes. Maybe open your hands in Padma Mudra, Lotus Flower, and visualize drinking in peace and presence, and then sending peace and presence out through the softness of your heart. Send it to everyone here practicing together. Exhale and send it out your windows into the world. Peace and presence. One more breath. Let's inhale again. Arms over the ears. Urdhva Hastasana. And exhale. Uttanasana. We'll meet again in Adha Mukha. So looking forward, step or float back. Move through your vinyasa, meeting back in our down dog. Walking feet together. We're going to lift the right leg and open to our right. Step through, Virabhadrasana, two. Reach your back heel down. Pause here another moment. And we're going to turn both our palms up to the ceiling. We're going to inhale the arms both alongside the ear. And we're going to do Virabhadrasana 2, facing to the left. So just pivot around on the balls of your feet. Virabhadrasana 2. Hold. Again, turn both your palms up. Lift them alongside your ears. Turn your left toes in. And this time, set up for Parsrita Paratanasana C. Exhale, hands behind you if you need to use a belt. Pull your fist down, inhale, look up, and exhale, fold forward. Hinge at your groins and just drop in. You might sigh and just ah, really feel that you're emptying your shoulders of anything that doesn't allow you to feel present. Sometimes when we're feeling anxious or uncertain, where your, our thoughts rush into a future that doesn't even exist, that we haven't even experienced, worrying about things that aren't actually here in this moment. So instead, just send yourself love, send all your situations love, all your people love. Choosing love over worrying. One more breath. Now stamping into your heels, let's rise, keeping the arms in the same shape as you come all the way up and follow through. Then looking forward, take your fist over to your left hip and take your right foot and point it out for a warrior two position again. And actually let's switch our fists. I meant to say right hip, sorry about that. Take your fist over to your right hip, warrior two. And then we'll reverse our warrior, sweeping the right arm over the head with the left arm staying in this bound position. And then we're gonna flow into Parsva Konasana. You can place your elbow on your knee and keep your left arm bound behind your back and lean back. Or some of you might reach under with your right hand and grab your left fingers or wrists. 
might want to bring your feet in just a little closer and perhaps even straighten out the right leg while you're here. Relax your neck. Let's be here another breath. Whatever variation your body is happy with. Now we're gonna travel forwards into half moon. A block can also be really helpful in your Ardha Chandrasana. Lifting your left leg, and if you'd like to, go right into bending your left knee. Take your bound hand back to your foot. Ardha Chandra Chapasana. Kicking back. Again, opening expansively from center. One more breath. If you're holding your foot, let's re-extend and meet again briefly in a vertical split. Take a bow. And then looking forward, we're gonna lunge the left leg back and return to a low lunge, Anjani Asana. And then invite ourselves back into Hanuman, which could definitely be the half splits repeated. Really listen into your hamstring. This posture, Hanuman, is all about devotion. So be devoted to yourself here, being patient and loving. If you feel like you can go a little further, you can always step your left leg back a bit, keeping this forward leg in a bent position. And just kind of keep going back your left leg. As your left leg goes back, your forward leg will have no choice but to maybe go a little bit more forward, but maybe put a block under the hamstring, honoring that enough is enough. And oftentimes less is more when we're in the splits. Again, this is the pose of devotion, of love, of patience. It takes so much patience and devotion to be in the splits. So be here in a very present way, not attached to any goal. Perhaps focusing energetically on all that you feel most devoted to in life. Those people, places, and things that bring you into a state of love and gratitude. And see if the simple thought of all of that helps you to soften here. Another breath. Now as we exit, please choose what would be most nourishing for you. That could be child's pose. Maybe you would like to do a three-legged dog and open. Maybe another one-legged vinyasa. These are all just suggestions. And then perhaps ekapada kandanyasana, like you're doing the splits in the air. So it's an arm balance. You can lean forward, bring your right knee to the outside of your right tricep. And then go ahead and just sneak your left elbow into your side and kind of lean into it. Look forward. Got a block in my face. <laughs> and extend your legs out. And then let it go. Any amount of effort there is awesome. Ah, feel thankful for your strength. Sigh it out. We'll walk our feet together. Lift our left leg. Open to your left. Look forward. Step through. Virabhadrasana two. Warrior two. You might want to circle out your wrists here if they feel a little achy from arm balances and chaturangas. And then let's turn the palms up, lift your arms alongside your ears, and simply switch sides. Warrior two, Virabhadrasana, finding this very courageous and balanced pose. Beautiful and simple. Turn your palms up, lift your arms, turn your toes in, reach, reach, reach. And again, exhale, hands behind. Parzrita, Padatanasana C. Pull your fist out as you lift your heart and fold forward. Take that bow. 
surrender to the guidance of our heart. Inhale, I am. Exhale, peaceful and present. Send that energy to your shoulders, to your hips, another breath. Stamping into your legs. We're gonna come all the way up and follow through here with a heart opening. Keep your fist as they are, but then just place them over on your left hip bone. Take your left foot pointed out and return to a warrior two shape with reverse warrior. You just have a bound arm there behind your back. Keep your arm bound behind you for half bound parts of the Kanasana elbow to knee and just spin the left rib cage to the right. Look over your shoulder, stay exactly here. Or if your body is feeling that this is also really nourishing, feels good, then reach underneath and clasp. You might shorten your stance and maybe work towards like a triangle stance with a bind, straightening your leg, release your neck. Breathe, breathe, breathe. We'll keep the right arm bound behind us. Ardha Chandrasana. Again, you might want to bring a block with you for a little extra support in your balance. Lift your right leg. Feel really strong in that intention and strength. Raise your arm and maybe go right into your Chapasana variation. Staying strong on our standing leg, we'll return to a vertical split. You can always shake out your standing toes as you take that fold. Look up. Exhale, lunge your right leg back, coming into low lunge, Anjani Asana for a breath. Exhale, hands down, returning to our Hanuman, which again, might be a half Hanuman, sliding your heel forward and taking a bow. If you know your body is open to receive a little bit more depth, return to a bent left knee, and instead of sliding the left foot forward again, bring your right leg back. Just kind of scoop back a little bit at a time while breathing. Eventually, maybe your left leg slides forward and honor that your two sides, like mine, might be not the same. This leg needs support, so honor that. Feel devoted to yourself. Give yourself love. Allow yourself to have support. We all need support. And again, as you drop into the space that feels good in your body, where you know you're not quite at your edge, you're in a place in between. So you can soften at your edges, drop into the spirit of the pose, which is Hanuman's pose, pose of devotion. Drop into the innermost place of your heart. What do you feel the most devoted to in life? What people, places, and things just fill you, charge you with love, with gratitude? Bring that into your thoughts, into your breath, and then into your body's ability to be in this pose, Hanumanasana. And again, as we exit, so many options. You might feel happiest just melting into Balasana. Do that. Maybe three-legged dog and maybe also a three-legged vinyasa. Perhaps moving into your Ekapada Pound Vinyasana where you bring your left knee to the outside of your left tricep. 
shift way forwards, look forward. Again, you can sneak your elbow right above your hip. Split your legs apart and hover over the mat. Very dynamic pose. Let it go when you're ready. Clear the slate. And we will all meet in Balasana. Child. You could either have knees wide and arms forward or knees together and hands back. Your choice. Melt in. Another breath. And keeping your chin tucked in, let's slowly roll out of child. Separate your knees. You can lean back on your fingers. Scoop up your hips in this modified camel. And then lower your hips to actually prepare for camel. So coming onto your knees, maybe cushioning them with a little blanket or extra mat under your knees. We'll support our lower back and hugging the elbows. And again, allow yourself to be devoted to your breath here. So bow your head, be with your inhale that lifts and expands you and fills you. Keep that fullness as you slowly exhale a little bit back, but mostly focus on lifting yourself up. So this pose really isn't about going back. It's about lifting yourself up. If you continue to reach back for your feet and stay lifted, that's great. Perhaps your head nestles back, but we do carry fight or flight in the back of the neck. If that's causing you to enter that spot, just look up. It feels just as good. So really honor you, another breath here. Let's support our back, ease our way up, bringing your knees together and your feet together. Tuck your tail, sit right on top of your feet. Let's bring our hands over the heart and take a moment here just to bow and look within. You can kind of round your back. And then from here, maybe you have some supports that you could use like blocks, or some folded um, blankets behind your back. We're gonna move into Supta Virasana. So you're gonna bring your knees together and your feet wide apart. You might just go back on your hands, maybe put a little support under your bottom and just be here. Or eventually lower yourself over whatever support you might have at home. Maybe you have a bolster, a couple blocks, you could bring them in like a little fish pose folded blankets. But again, if you're sitting more upright, that's good too. Working into stretching our quads, psoas and groins. Wherever you are with it, just feel the heaviness and the strength of your quads. Imagine there's a helpful friend with their hands, maybe just gently pressing down above your kneecaps, supporting you here as you let go. Let go whatever you might be holding in your quads, especially frustrations or annoyance or anger or fear. And as that moves through you, if perhaps you feel like you need to make a noise, sigh, make a noise as you sigh, perhaps even some tears drip out of the corners of your eyes, let it go, let it flow, let it rise to the surface. And then just continue to breathe into your heart that is expansive and open here. And send the love and the strength from your heart to your legs. 
to the foundation of your temple, your being. And as those emotions rise to the surface and are then charged with the energy of love, we can visualize ourselves with that I am mantra flowing through every cell of our being. I am peaceful and present. I am peaceful and present. Let's take two more breaths here. Maybe you could smile a little as you hold these last few breaths in this pose. Lift the corners of your lips. We'll place our hands on our feet. Press your elbows down and start to rise. Look straight ahead. Come up and if you have a lot of support behind you, you'll move it aside. Come to all fours. You can take your legs back one at a time and just kind of uh, move forward and back, maybe on the ball of your foot. You might tap your feet on the floor. Whatever you need to go, do to get the blood flowing and eventually return to a down dog. If your down dog also wants to flow through a vinyasa one final time, do so whatever that needs to look like in your body. And then we'll look forward. We're gonna walk or float through to a seated position and sit towards the short edge of the mat, scooting your hips forward. Take your arms alongside your knees, inhale. Slow exhale, one vertebra at a time, all the way to the floor for a yawning stretch. Interlace your fingers. Stretch your legs, point your toes, and just breathe into the clarity and openness of your body. Now, if you have a belt or a towel nearby, you might use it here, bending your right knee in. We're gonna loop around the ball of the right foot or loop with a belt. And we're gonna raise the head and shoulders, bowing to your knee. Supta Hasta, Padagustasana. Then lower down and open your leg out to the right side. Look over your left shoulder and ground that left side of your body. Drink in full inhales into equally deep exhales. back to center and either from a straightened leg take a twist or you could always bend your knee as well and cross that bent knee over or keep the leg straight unfold and open to your right let your ear release towards your shoulder and allow your right shoulder to give into gravity one more breath And come back to center. Let's re extend our right leg, holding comfortably the back of the leg, wherever that is for you, and just stretch a few moments here with the head grounded. Exhale, belly to back body, feeling the ground beneath you, that support under you. We're gonna release the right leg and let the arms float overhead. Again, just stretch your whole body out and yawn. And then we're gonna hug the left leg in, interlace, or not interlacing your fingers, we're gonna loop the big toe with the first two fingers and thumb, or maybe you put a belt around your foot or a towel, whatever you're using. Lift your head and shoulders, take a bow to your knee. 
supta hasta. Padagustasana. And exhale down, open the leg out to your left. So your leg's gonna look like the shape of the letter V. You might look over to your right side as you continue to really ground the right side of your body. And just exhale into the spaciousness that you've created. Breathe slowly, deeply into side ribs and lungs. Calming deep breath. Let's come back to center for a twist, either keeping your legs straight, or if you prefer, you could bend your knee and lower the knee to the earth. Unfold and open to your left side, gazing down the length of your arm. Feel as if there's a weight on your shoulder that your shoulder could further give into as you exhale. We'll lay onto our back, extend your left leg up, and again, just walking up comfortably, back of the leg, keeping head and shoulders grounded, keeping your lower back relaxed into the earth. We'll just breathe here. And then we'll let go, arms again floating overhead, leg lowering, take one more yawning stretch. Sign, exhale. And then we're gonna surrender to our Shavasana. So if there's any supports you wanna bring in, you can definitely add whatever you might need. Maybe underneath your knees, support, under your head, some support. And as you drop here into your Shavasana, I'm gonna share with you a reading. When we nourish ourselves with good people, projects, surroundings, scenery, love, magic, beauty, and self-care, we, ra we radiate light into the world and continually sharpen our vision, perception, and clarity all at once. This in turn spreads to other beings, which spreads to even more. Remember that one tiny drop can raise an ocean. Keep wanting, desiring, doing, breathing in the sweet things.
Please continue to honor however long you want to stay in your Shavasana. If you're ready to begin gentle movement through fingers and toes and awaken slowly. Eventually rolling to your right side and being there for a few moments as well, coiled into that sweet, peaceful center of your heart. And if you're closing with me, pressing the floor away, you can rise, sitting tall, and bringing palms again to heart center in this Anjali Mudra that balances our left and right hemispheres and drops us in to that jewel that rests in the heart, that jewel of peace and presence. We'll honor this space closing together with a single own. Oh. My gratitude to each of you, love and blessings to all of you. Namaste.